What is happening everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today we have a really cool knife to dig into. Before we get started, double check and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I would love to have you here. And before you head out, hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. And if you uh, have some extra time, go ahead and leave me a comment down below what you're carrying today, what you think of the knife we're taking a look at, anything your little heart desires. So we have some nice packaging from Microtech. Now this was sent into the channel by one of my good buddies, Optimus Prime, and this was sent in to be given away. And I decided to go ahead and give this knife away during a members only giveaway. Uh, and we do members only giveaways several times a month. Sometimes we do multiple member giveaways uh, during the weeks. Uh, lately, we have been doing two. So it is definitely worth it here on this channel to become a member. And we do members only videos. We do lots of stuff for the members here. It is my way of trying to give back to the people who support the channel. Uh, but so we have the Microtech MSI here, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll go over the knife a little bit here. Now, this knife has already been given away. I am just doing a video on it before the knife gets sent off to the new owner. So we have a two-tone M390. Is it the M390 MK, uh, which is Microtex M390? Uh, I guess there's supposedly a little difference Uh in regards to its makeup. Uh, is it enough difference to make any difference? I don't know that, uh, but it looks clean. I'm sure it's going to perform all right at, at minimum. So we have a DLC finish on the primary here. And then on the flats, we have this kind of very light tumble finish. And that goes back here towards the tang. But what's really cool is on the chamfer of the spine here, we have the DLC running up above. So it really, really looks cool. And then we have this little ramp here with some jimping, some light jimping, uh, two or three jimps there, which is a nice place to lock in that thumb. They have a nice little sharpening choil area here, semi finger choil. I wouldn't call it a finger choil, so to speak, but you can definitely get up in there, especially if it's more of a light, you know, lighter controlled type cut. Uh, you could definitely get right up behind that edge if you needed to. And then uh, the way this is designed, you'll be able to get right up above or on top of that tip if you have utility type cuts or something, you know, that you need to be very detailed with. Now, this is going to be uh, FRN, I believe, for the handle material. And then I think they did aluminum as well. And this thing is littered with hardware, guys. Uh, I don't know, you know, unless you were just curious. I haven't had this apart. Uh, but there are, I think, 14 screws in this handle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's 16. So there's eight on both sides. Uh, so this is definitely meant to be overbuilt. Uh, we have a big lanyard hole there. Big filler tab there with two of the Torx bits, uh, Torx head screws protruding there. Nice deep carry clip, standard Microtech clip there. And then we have the MSI with its birth date on there, 1 2024. So this is this is actually uh, within the last month or so that this was created and bought. In. Now to the action. Uh, I think that's been, I haven't paid a, a ton of attention to the MSI, just a tiny little bit. Uh, I, I've come to understand that for the most part, a lot of them were a little light on the opening method, right? Uh, I haven't heard any issues with lockup or lock failure or any issues with that. It's mainly been just the opening 
uh, strength of that spring. Now, could this one be better? Yes, it could definitely be better. Is it enough to deter me from possibly buying one of these? Now, who's to say they haven't gotten better, they haven't gotten stronger, and, and they won't get better and stronger? They just might. But as it sits right now, would I buy one? Depending on the price tag, uh, I would. Uh, it's not quite enough to deter me. Would I rather it be stronger? Yes, I would. But I can thumb flick this guy out and I can reverse flick this guy out, no problem. Uh, I wish it was just a little bit stronger. Now, if you add in just a little tiny bit of wrist, then yeah, you might not wanna do that. And this might not be your cup of tea at all. Uh, and, and that's the case with every knife. Not everything is going to be for everyone and not everyone will like everything. But there's always something out there for everybody. Uh, I think this knife is cool. Let's take a look at what it looks like in the pocket. It should carry uh, fairly deeply. You're gonna have just a tiny little bit poking out there of the pocket, not much at all. Typical standard Microtech clip. Now I don't know if this is aluminum or titanium. I know we have some uh, steel type liners here where the lock is housed. That's going to be a coil spring there. So it's definitely a lot different design than the Omega type crossbar locks. And I do like how they did their tabs here. Uh, SOG does something very similar with their style of crossbar lock. Uh, the, the tabs is what I'm talking about. This is just like their OTF tabs, but they are shrank down a little bit. But in this case, they're not uncomfortable to disengage or to use. And I actually really like these tabs. Uh, they're nice and grippy, but uh, they have not caused me any issues with, you know, fatiguing my fingers or giving me issues with disengagement. Uh, and it definitely has a nice, like, drop shut action. Once you pull them tabs, this thing is coming down, and it's coming down nice and clean, too. The action is pretty clean on this guy as far as the disengagement and the closing of the blade. Uh, it's a good size, too. This thing is a, a, a pretty big beast, in my opinion. It's coming down very close to 9 inches. I would say about eight and seven eighths to this corner here. So it's definitely going to be a good size. And since this may be the only video I do with this guy, why don't we go ahead and for overview, review type purposes, why don't we go ahead and I got some gook on this blade. Why don't we go ahead and throw up some comparison knives here. We have the Elementum and the 20.5 and it's going to tower over both of them. We have the bug out there and it's definitely going to tower over that. How about the Tanto PM2 in S30V? It's going to tower over that and let's do just one more because the DECA and the Para 3 are going to be much smaller. So there's the RSK from Hogue and Doug Ritter, and that's a good size knife. And even the MSI here, pretty much, uh, they're close in handle, but uh, the MSI has quite a bit more blade length than the RSK, which is uh, fairly interesting as far as the design is concerned. They got a lot more blade uh, in this handle than Hogue has in this handle, which I've never actually noticed. Is it, hey, I guess it is a little short, which I'm not much for ratios. I, I don't care about that one, one bit. Uh, I just never noticed that really. But uh, Microtech definitely got all they could. Yeah, they got all they could basically in this handle, which is, you know, like I said, I'm not much for ratios. I really don't, you know, unless it's insanely unproportional, you know, you have a five inch handle with a two inch blade, then I, I not for that, but a, a Spyderco and, and those types of knives, 
they, that does not bother me one bit that the blade may be a little, you know, not ratioed with the handle, so to speak. So why don't we go ahead and we'll check this edge and see what we got here. This magazine paper, it, it's it's been happening like every knife I cut, even ones that are really sharp. Uh, this isn't my normal SMKW paper. This is some other crap. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it got like beat up by the sun or what, but it, it's just... I don't know. It's just crappy paper every every time, or it's just even thinner than the the SMKW magazine paper. But either way, uh, that has a pretty good edge on it. We can check it up against some uh, cardboard. So let's check it on some cardboard, and then I got the uh, the SOG here just to <clears throat> kind of compare with this. Yeah, this. This has a good edge on it, and like I said, this isn't new out of the box. This was this was owned by somebody, and I believe carried. Uh, I don't think a ton, though. I don't think it was carried or used a ton. Uh, it's in mint condition, so I don't think he used it a whole lot. I, I don't think he, he was a big fan of it uh, for one reason or another. I'm not sure. We didn't get into that a whole a whole lot, uh, just basically that he thought it would be something a little bit different. But uh, why don't we go ahead and we'll bring out the SOG, which is the tabs I was talking about. It's not the same lock, like this is a coil spring, and I believe this is on Omega Springs, but they have, they both have tabs. And, you know, I, I there's certain companies that do crossbar locks very well. They, the there's enough protrusion there and they jimp it or they sculpt it just right to grab it very easily. But there's something to be said for these tab style crossbar locks. Uh, SOG is one of my favorites just because of these tabs. Uh, they're very easy to grab a hold of. There's tons of surface area there. They step it <clears throat> and that is just like the MSI here. Uh, it, there's a, enough surface area there to really get a purchase and they stair step it all the way up. Uh, I think what four or five levels makes a cool little X pattern in it. And, uh, it's just very easy to grab a hold of. And it's, it's actually a very fun knife. You can really get this thing, you know, moving around, uh, if you really wanted to. So this is one thing I have been wanting to check though, and I don't think Michael will mind if I check it just to see. I think he would probably wanna know. Uh, there's no up and down play and there's no side to side play neither. So that is good news. And this thing has had plenty of time to break in. Uh, I've messed with it quite a bit since I got it. And then I know that uh, old Optimus Prime has also, you know, used and carried this and messed with it as well. So it's had plenty of time to break in. So we have a positive lock out there. And I, I don't expect this to, to fail. I just wanted to have it recorded. I just want to know. Uh, and I think it'll pass very easily. That that coil spring, it, it should be very, very strong. Yeah, it, it sounds solid. It sounds very solid. It feels very solid. So, you know, that if you're not someone who's, you know, really that concerned with having extremely good opening action, as long as it open smoothly and uh, cleanly and there's no issue, you know, because some people will just open this up kind of like a slow roll. Some people don't care that it's not, you know, real strong and, and you know, what we would consider maybe satisfying some of us. Uh, some people don't care about that. As long as it opens up cleanly and smoothly uh, and it locks out good, you know, a lot of people, that's where they kind of end. Uh, and that's one reason why I said I wouldn't have 
you know, any qualms about picking one of these up. Even as this sits here, I think uh, this is a cool design and I think it's very well made and it's built like a freaking tank, like I said earlier. Uh, I think they really went overboard with the screws. Now, were they all necessary? I don't think they were. I think that was definitely intentional to to do all those. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the old version one Hogue uh, Decas, where there was like how many seven seven screws on each side or something like that. But either way, uh, Microtech knows what they're doing and they continually sell out of these very very quickly. They have every drop since they released these uh i haven't seen them stay in stock for longer than a, a minute or two so uh definitely has a lot of people's interest peaked peaked and a lot of people picking these up uh, i think you can routinely get these around like 200 bucks i want to say uh depending on the model I, the frn is going to be a lot cheaper than the aluminum one uh, but there's a high demand for all the different variations of this knife. And I'd be completely happy with uh, this FRN one. The aluminum one would definitely be more my style. And I would probably prefer that to this. Uh, but this is a case where I don't mind the FRN. But I think all in all, Microtech has an awesome design here. I love seeing... Uh, the non-automatic knives coming from them. I love seeing the sheep's foot style blades, just different designs coming from them. Uh, we definitely need more of this from Microtech. And they are also trying to put these out at, I know originally these were supposed to be very, very affordable. I think because of the extremely high demand, they have actually raised the prices up. Uh, from what they initially said they would be, uh, but they're still not bad at all for being a USA made knife. <clears throat> now, just because you know it's a USA made knife does not necessarily mean uh, it's above everything else. People have that misconception that just because something's USA made means it's better than everything else made anywhere else. And that's simply not the case. USA made knives have their issues all across the board as this one does have a very light opening action. Uh, so, uh, th definitely a few tweaks on this knife. And I think this thing could be a very exceptional EDC knife as it sits. I think it's, it's great. Uh, I think it needs a little bit of tweaking though, to kind of put it up on that next level. You'll have to let me know what you think down in the comments of this MSI. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Greatly appreciate it, guys. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, go check out one of these three videos here, here, and here. Otherwise, guys, I will catch you on the next one.